Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Hope everybody's having a great day. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to take a look at the short but pretty sweet discography of uh, a band that's pretty well respected. All right. Uh, talking about a somewhat of a super group, at least when they initially formed Captain Beyond. All right. Not a mainstream band by any means, but for those who really appreciate maybe the lesser known or more underground bands that kind of floated in the hard rock, prog, psych, could call them early stoner rock, early progressive metal, right? Kind of did all all sorts of stuff. They were also a really, at their core, a really good kind of classic rock sounding band, especially on their later two releases. But uh, a really cool band that kind of came and went pretty quickly without a lot of notoriety, but in subsequent years, decades later, Many people kind of focus on them as a pretty important band that, especially their debut album, okay, which did really, you know, which has really kind of sat with everybody all these years and become a very important release in the history of rock. So, of course, uh, I mentioned somewhat of a super group. So you had Rod Evans on lead vocals. Of course, Rod was with Deep Purple, lead singer for Deep Purple on their first three albums, the Mark I era. Okay, you got drummer Bobby Caldwell, who was in uh, Johnny Winter's band, okay? You got guitarist Larry Rhino Reinhardt, okay, formerly of Iron Butterfly, and also bassist Lee Dorman, also from Iron Butterfly. So, you know, some these guys came from some pretty big bands. Pretty big bands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank their three studio albums. It's all they released. All right, they got a couple live things that have come out here and there, and uh, I know the band has uh, kind of reformed in recent years, with uh, Caldwell on drums and you know strange lineups and what have you and done some live shows and things like that. But that's a story for another time, right? So we're going to take a look at my... Uh, I like all three of these albums quite a bit. Each one is pretty different from the next, all right? The, the second and third albums, fairly different from the debut, but I think they still have a lot of merit, right? So I'm going to go, uh, starting off at number three, I'm going to go with Dawn Explosion from 1977. Now, this is with a little bit different lineup, so by this time, Rod Evans has left the band, okay? We've got in his place a guy named Willie Deferne on lead vocals. Does a pretty good job. He's got kind of like a Glenn Hughesy-style voice, I think. Uh, you got uh, Larry Rhino Reinhardt still on lead guitar, Lee Dorman still on bass, and Bobby Caldwell still on drums. I think it's a pretty solid record. Um, like I said, I think the... The kind of the style that uh, Willie brings to the band, a little bit different. I think there's a little more kind of um, soul, all right? Because he's got that kind of, like I say, he's got that kind of soulful voice like Glenn Hughes. Doesn't shriek as much as Glenn, Glenn did back in the day. But I think uh, there's a good mix of songs on here, a good mix of hard rock and more just kind of radio-friendly rock and roll. Like I kind of liken their second and third records a little bit to kind of like uh, maybe the more rockin' Doobie Brothers stuff, Okay. Maybe a hint of trapeze, all right? Uh, they do also some more kind of like acoustic folky stuff uh, a little bit on the second and third album. Kind of reminds me of like the more upbeat rock and Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. And especially on the second album, and we'll get to that, there's a little bit of a Santana feel. But uh, this album, some catchy songs on here, all right? Do or Die, really good song. Fantasy, good hard rocker. You got the uh, multi-part six-minute uh, Breath of Fire, Okay. You've got the very cool uh, Oblivion, which I think is a very good track. All right, Midnight Memories. Some good stuff on here. The Space Reprise and Interlude, okay. Some some good stuff on here. Sweet Dreams, Icarus. I think it's a, it's a good, solid record. I think it just doesn't get a lot of attention because, you know, Rod Evans no longer in the band. But I think that they put out a pretty good album there in 77. Of course, they were to disappear, what we thought would be forever shortly thereafter, right? Um, coming in at number two, I'm going to go with Sufficiently Breathless from 1973. All right. This was uh, obviously released, uh, you know, not that long after the debut, but we've got a little bit of a revamped lineup. So in addition to, you know, those um, to Rod Evans and Larry Reinhardt, okay, and Lee Dorman, Okay, Caldwell is gone by this point, so they bring in uh, Marty Rodriguez on drums as well as uh, Reese Winans on uh, keyboards. Reese, of course, you know, would later show up with Steve Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble, as well as uh, Guia Garcia on congas, percussion, and timbales. All right, 
which gave them like a little fuller sound and brought some of those kind of Latin rhythms, I think. So that's why I kind of uh, give the little comparison to Santana, especially on this album. There's a lot of groove, a lot of uh, cool percussion-y things going on. Uh, title track, Sufficiently Breathless, I think is a very, very cool song. Again, more of kind of like that, um, it's got a Doobie Brothers feel to it, right? A lot of good rhythms, not very heavy at all, right? Good cleaner guitar sounds, catchy vocals. I think Rod does a little more subdued vocal style on this album, which I think works for the songs. Uh, Bright Blue Tango, another good song. Uh, Drifting at Space is, is terrific. Evil Men, that's pretty rocking, as well as Star Glow Energy. There are a couple pretty good hard rockers on here. You got Distant Sun, and then um, Everything's a Circle. All right, it's just uh, good for me. Good melodic hard rock, classic rock. A little bit of that kind of Latino edge going on there, which I think uh, you know worked well for the band. It was, but it was a big difference from the debut. And I think that's why a lot of people, when they talk about Captain Beyond, they're like, "Oh, the debut is great. The rest of it's not so great." I, I actually think the rest of it is pretty damn good as well. But you know, my number one obviously is going to be the uh, the debut. A terrific album, a groundbreaking album. Like I said, there's some pretty complex stuff going on here. It's kind of heavy, all right, in spots. You could say, you know, the early, you know, early influences to a lot of modern day stoner bands as well as some progressive metal bands could have come from this album, all right. You got Dancing Madly Backwards on a Sea of Air, terrific song, heavy, proggy, all right. Armworth. All right, Myopic Void, Mesmeration Eclipse, Eagle River of Fear, a lot of like kind of short songs that are all kind of pieced together on here. Thousand Days of Yesterday, right? Also a nice uh, multi part suite. I Can Feel Nothing. All right, As the Moon Speaks, To the Waves of the Sea, Astral Lady, As the Moon Speaks, Return, and I Can Feel Nothing, Part Two. So a lot of kind of like multi part movements. And things, it's all pretty complex, it's all pretty heavy. Great drumming from Bobby Caldwell. A lot of really good riffs from Rhino on here. And more importantly, I think this is probably the vocal performance from Rod Evans that Deep Purple probably really wanted, right? Here he shows his hard rocking side, and he's a damn good singer. He was actually very good in Deep Purple as well. You know, maybe they were going in a different direction. They wanted someone with a little more balls, but uh, he's showing it here. You know, and this is, what, about uh, three years after the fact that he left Deep Purple. So uh, a terrific album. There's the guys in the back. That if you don't have, and you're a hard rock, prog rock fan, you need to get this. Like I said, a big influence on a lot of progressive metal and stoner bands of today. And, uh, you know, an album that I think often gets cited as one of those kind of unknown gems of the early 70s. So that's I'm going to rank them as they release them. But like I said... The second one is very good, too. It's a little different. Third one, also very underrated. I think all three are very good. Obviously, the first is clearly the best, but these two are excellent albums as well. If you just, you know, if this never happened and they just came out with these two, most people would be talking about how, how really good these are, and they actually are. So there you have it. A quick little Captain Beyond episode um, for those of, because a lot of you have been asking, and I'm, I'm a fan of the band, so I figured, you know what, even if they have a small catalog like this worth talking about, all right? because uh, an important band that I think more people need to know about. So curious to see how you rank them. I'm sure most folks are going to rank them the same as me. So if you want to just talk about how much you love Captain Beyond and which songs you dig and all that kind of stuff, that's cool too. So uh, visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're, of course, we're here on the Mighty YouTube all the damn time. Coming up, we've got uh, going to rank the albums of Billy Joel by popular request. Also do want to mention a lot of you guys have asked over the past bunch of months it's like pete we love your channel you put so much hard work into this how can we help you out here uh, is there a way to donate and give a little bit of love and all that kind of stuff so i yesterday i've been getting a lot of requests for this so yesterday i set up a ko-fi account okay which i will have uh, there's a little link to it on the main page but i'm also going to put the link to our ko-fi page on the in the description of this video so if you want to you know monthly give a little bit every little bit helps you know the ads work nice too but um that doesn't pay a lot and most people just click off the ad as soon as the video starts so you would help me out greatly by letting the ads run okay at least for a little bit if it's a banner ad on the bottom let it stay on there if it's a you know 30 second video or 30 second ad before the video let it run that'll help me greatly uh but if also if you want to you know donate three or five dollars or ten dollars or whatever you want whenever you can 
that'll help me as well to keep this train going because, you know, there's a lot of work and a lot of time that goes into this. I'm working between my day job and this. I'm working seven days a week, uh, mega, mega hours. And while I enjoy it and love it, uh, every little bit would, would greatly help. So uh, if you can, if you can't, that's cool too, right? Because I'm going to continue doing this stuff anyway. But if you really would like to help out, uh, just click on the Ko-Fi link in the description and uh, that'll take you to our Ko-Fi, Ko-Fi page and you can buy me a coffee or a tea or a beer, whatever it, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So anyway, we'll see you guys probably later on today with a little Billy Joel action, all right? So, uh, and then a lot of stuff coming up this weekend for your power metal fans doing all sorts of power metal stuff this weekend. Halloween. Symphony X, Iced Earth. Stay tuned, all right? We'll see you then. Bye-bye.